Han sighed as Claire and he walked towards the library. It had been only a couple of minutes since they split off from his sister, who kept saying embarrassing things. Your sister really cares about you, Claire said suddenly. Looking away from Claire, Han scratched his cheek and said, I know. Walking down the street, memories of his sister interacting with him surfaced. The entire time he's known Jennifer, she's acted like the typical dotting sister who showered him with affection. Whenever his mom needed to leave to go to the grocery store, Jennifer would happily volunteer to babysit him. Having an older sister was a different feeling from having an older brother. Thinking back, he often remembered his older brother acting cold towards him. Though Han knew that his older brother cared for him, his family was never good at displaying their feelings openly, which took him a while to understand. With his mom and sister, everything was different, especially the way they interacted with him. Having people who cherished him made him understand what those pop songs on his previous earth were always singing about. There was no other feeling better than being valued. It was a different feeling of love compared to the girls. His mom and sister gave him the feeling of wanting to act like a traditional male instead of how he was like with the girls. I don't think I've ever really seen you act that way before, Claire said again as they were walking. What do you mean? he asked. Whenever you're dealing with other people, you act somewhat apathetic, like nothing really matters. Even the emotions you display seem to be dialed down, she said. It makes me a little jealous. They ended up walking the rest of the way in silence, not knowing what to say afterward. Going into the downtown area, there were more buildings and people walking about. Han looked at some of the buildings, seeing the usual grocery store, bookstore, and clothing store. All of them were locally owned businesses, giving it a more welcoming feel to it. The only thing he used to notice was how the majority of people were of Caucasian descent, making his Asian features stand out. His mother was a first generation Asian and came over to the nation after meeting his father overseas. He imagined that if he weren't a reincarnated man, being biracial would likely have been difficult with the looks he would often get even at school. He did admit to himself that this place was a lot more accepting than the home he grew up in previously. Even though people looked at him differently, they didn't say racial slurs. Hey Han, looking nice on your date, Mr. Evans, the owner of the bookstore, called out to him. I'm going over to see if Alex is still at the library, Han called out to him. Mr. Evans laughed loudly after hearing this. I saw that last Hannah dragging him to the library earlier. It doesn't look like he'll be able to escape from that one anytime soon. He smacked his belly as he continued to laugh. After calming down, he yelled out, I'll be getting some new comics, so you tell Alex that he should stop by. I also got some new books that you'll enjoy too. Han waved at the store owner as he continued heading towards the library. Occasionally, Han would see one of his mother's friends and would wave at them. Most of the mothers in this area knew one another and formed a network to help one another out. With how his dad used to treat his mom, Han was concerned with her mental health, but her friends had been a good source of support. He soon learned that this was not an isolated thing and many wives had to deal with abusive husbands. Divorce wasn't a readily accepted solution, so women found solace with one another. It made him realize that destroying his dad wouldn't really solve anything, making him wonder if all societies were like the one he was in. Even in the previous Earth, Han had often seen girlfriends being stuck in abusive relationships. Passing by many rectangular buildings made out of brick with the occasional one covered in cement, 
the two of them saw the library begin to emerge. Compared to the rest of the town, the library looked intentionally aged with its cemented columns. It didn't seem exactly like the Roman-influenced government buildings in his past world, but there were some similarities. There were some images of fairies and other mythical creatures dancing across the slate on top of the columns. Reaching the library, the two of them walked up the marble steps. At the top of the stairs were the main doors into the library. With his left hand, he grabbed the vertical bronze bar and opened the door. Going through the first set of doors, he looked at the decal on the glass with the words "Cherry Grove Library" and the hours of operation. Opening the second set of doors, he felt the air rush towards him from the difference in pressure. The entrance was completely open, with a giant globe above the welcome desk. Han nodded his head to the assistant librarian, who was a guy attending school to become a librarian. It wasn't until he came to his world and going to the library that he learned that becoming a librarian was a challenging job. I'm guessing you're looking for your friends, the guy said. Yeah, are they still here? He asked. The assistant librarian chuckled. The guy was protesting about coming to the library. But the girl looked like she was on a mission. They're on the second floor, likely still in the study section over by the reference books. Thank you, Claire said to the guy as they walked past and into the main floor of the library. Since we know that Alex and Hannah are here, maybe Han began heading towards the section with fantasy and science fiction books. Claire grabbed his arm. No, you also could do some studying, especially with how you. Likely, didn't get full marks on today's pop quiz and math test. Claire stated. Han's shoulders slumped from hearing her words. I'm going to be fine. You know that our grades reset once we start high school. He attempted to rationalize with her. Absolutely not. With your study habits, it could be any moment where you slide too far back and get left behind with the course materials before you leave middle school. Claire stated with certainty. Staring at the fiction section he was leaving behind, as Claire dragged him behind her, he said, "I'll be back to read with you guys." He imagined tears trailing behind him, sparkling in the air as sad music played. "You're so melodramatic," Claire groaned as they passed by the children's book section and reached the elevator. Once the elevator doors opened and he stepped in, she pressed the button for the second floor. Above the controls was a sign that listed the contents on each of the levels. How about we go to the third floor and check out the computers or videos? He said excitedly, reaching his hand to press the third floor button. Claire smacked his hand but didn't say anything, making it clear what she thought of the idea. Teacher Claire. You're being too strict. I just finished trying out for the football team and need to relax my body," he said. She looked at him and gave the same scary smile that all girls seem to know instinctively. All the better for you to sit down in front of a book and study, to let your body rest," she said. As the chime indicated that they reached the second floor, Han stepped out first with Claire following. Walking forward and grasping the railing where he could look down and see the ground floor, he thought it was cool how they hung glittering balls that were arranged to look like the constellations. It's cool how they look like actual stars when the sun sets and they turn out the lights. Claire approached and rested her arms on the rail next to Han. I kind of missed laying under the night sky and watching the stars like I used to do when I was a kid. Han commented as he stared at the stars. Looking at the stars always made me feel like I was a tiny person, just watching them up in the sky. Claire said, her voice indicating her imagining the experience. When I'm laying down, I just imagine us floating in space in a wide universe, looking like a speck in the space. Han said, "As usual, you're such a romantic." Claire nudged him with her shoulder. 
Brushing his hair back with his hand, he grinned. Maybe I should become a writer. You tried out for the football team and became a second string quarterback, and now you're going to become a writer? Claire giggled. The two of them laughed at the idea as they walked towards the study area. As they approached the table, they could hear Alex's voice. Hannah, I've been here for several hours now. My brain feels like it's going to leak out of my brain and onto the textbook. Alex and Hannah were sitting at the table, piles of textbooks surrounding them. Laying on top of one of the textbooks, he was complaining to Hannah who was diligently reading one of the reference books and writing down notes on a notepad. If you spent more time reading instead of complaining, you'd be caught up with what you should have been studying before the exam, Hannah said unsympathetically. If your brain leaks out, at least we'll know that you have one, Han said, surprising the two of them. Turning to look behind him, Alex saw the two of them walking towards the table. He grinned and said, Han, help me convince my warden that I should be released early for good behavior. I'm in the same position as you are in, Han said, pointing at Claire, who sniffed with disdain at his attitude. Alex pretended to use a napkin to dab at sympathetic tears. You've also been captured, he said with sorrow. As if remembering something, Hannah said, How did it go? Claire sighed at hearing Hannah's question. Seeing her best friend's reaction, Hannah's expression slumped. I'm sure that if you try next year, you'll be able to. He made the team as a second string quarterback, Claire announced, interrupting Hannah. What? Alex and Hannah erupted. I guess I have a slight skill in sports, Han said offhandedly. <laughs>